Now let's discuss next type of flip flop. So next flip flop is D flip flop. So this D flip flop has only one input and that input is labeled as D. So this D stands for data. We have seen that in case of SR flip flop, in case of JK flip flop, there were two inputs. But in case of D flip flop, you will find only one input. Now let's see block diagram. So this is block diagram of D flip flop. So in this block diagram, you can see that there is one input uh, which is labeled as uh, D. Okay. There are two output Q and Q prime. Again, we know that Q and Q prime are complement of each other. Then let us assume that we have a D flip flop with negative H triggering. This is symbol of negative H triggering. Now let's see operation of D flip flop. So in D flip flop, if D is zero, then Q n plus one. What is the meaning of Q n plus one? So Q n plus one means next state of the flip flop. So if D is zero, then what will be the next state of it flip flop? So next state of D flip flop will be zero. Okay. And if D is one, if D is one, then Q n plus one. That is next state. Next state will be one. So this is the operation of D flip flop. Very simple. As there is only one input, okay. So by using this input, there are two possibility. Either D will be zero or D will be one. So if D is zero, then what will be the output or what will be the state of that D flip flop? What change is going to happen in state of D flip flop? So if D is zero, then next state of D flip flop will be zero. If D is one, then next state of D flip flop will be one. So the level present on D will be stored in flip flop when negative age is detected on the clock pulse. What this indicate? If I apply input zero to D flip flop, what is going to happen? Whether uh, output is going to change immediately? No. So this D flip flop will wait for negative age. So whenever negative age is detected on the clock pulse, then this output is going to change according to the input. Now here, what is input? Zero. So that's why. What will be the output? Zero. Getting? So in case of D flip flop, if I give input zero, what will be the next state of D flip flop? It will be zero. Now let's assume that D is one. So if I give input one to D flip flop, then when negative age is detected on the clock pulse, then output of D flip flop is going to change as per input. So here input is one. So that's why. What will be the next state of D flip flop? Again, it will be one. Are you getting? So that's why uh, we can say that in case of D flip flop, what happens? The level present on D. So level present on D. So this level, it can be either a low level or high level. It can be either zero or one. So this level is getting stored in the flip flop. Okay. So whatever input I'm applying, so that input will be stored in this D flip flop. When negative age is detected on the clock pulse, if we are making use of negative age triggering. So this is the operation of D flip flop, simple. Now let's try to understand operation of the, this D flip flop with the help of this table. Okay, so consider this first row. So what this arrow indicates? So this arrow indicates that when negative age is detected on the clock pulse. Okay, so when negative age is detected on the clock pulse at that time, let's assume that D is zero. D is zero. And what is QN? So QN means present state and QN plus one means next state. Okay, so please try to understand this first row. Here first row says that negative age has been detected on the clock pulse at that time. Let's assume that D is zero, present state is zero. What will be the next state? So we have seen that in case of D flip flop, next state depends on D. It does not depend upon present state. Whatever input I'm going to apply to this D, so same will become our next state. So here I'm applying zero. So what will be the next state? Next state should be zero. Now consider next row here again, what is happening? Negative age is detected on the clock pulse. Now see next row here, what is happening? Again, negative age is detected on the clock pulse at that time. What is status of D? D is zero. Okay, uh, D is zero. And what is present state? Present state is one. What will be the next state? So as we know that next state does not depend upon this present state. So what will be the next state? So this next state will depend upon input D. So D is zero. So what should be the uh, next state? It should be zero. Okay, similarly, so see here what will happen here input is one. What should be the next state again one here also? What is input input is one? What should be the next state of D flip flop? It is one, right? So in case of D flip flop, we can say that this output, okay, or next state follows input. If I apply zero, that zero will become next state. If I apply one, that one will become next state. Now let's see implementation of D flip flop. So D flip flop can easily implemented by using JK flip flop. So in JK flip flop, just you are supposed to add one inverter. So let's assume that this is our JK flip flop. 
So already we have seen working of JK flip flop. So in this JK flip flop, what you have to do, we have to add one inverter. So where that inverter should be added? So see, that inverter should be added between two inputs of J and K. So now instead of considering two separate input, I will consider only one input. Okay, that is D. So D stands for data. So this D should be directly connected to uh, J input of JK flip flop. Then this D should also be connected to uh, input of one NOT gate. And then output of that NOT gate should be connected to K input of JK flip flop. So now this resultant circuit is going to act as D flip flop. This JK flip flop plus this inverter is going to act as D flip flop. So now let's see how this circuit will act as D flip flop. So see if D is 0, okay. So in case of D flip flop, if D is 0, what should be the next state? Yes, we have seen that in case of a D flip flop, if D is 0, then next state should be 0. That is QN plus 1, it should be 0. If D is 1, what should be the next state? So if D is 1, then next state of D flip flop should be 1. Now let's see whether it is happening here. So D is 0. So if D is 0, what will happen? J will be 0. Right? And what will be the K? So D is 0. So output of NOT gate will be 1. And I can say that K will be 1. So do you remember JK flip flop? In case of JK flip flop, we have seen that J is 0 and K is 1. What should be the output? What should be the next state of JK flip flop? So here I told you that you should consider J uh, as yes, yes input of SR flip flop. So J is similar to yes input of SR flip flop and K is similar to uh, R input of SR flip flop. Okay. So here uh, I can say that J stands for set operation and K stands for reset operation. So here K is 1. Okay. So I can say that next state of JK flip flop will be 0 because K stands for reset. So here as K is 1, next state of JK flip flop will be surely 0. That is it is going to reset. JK flip flop is going to reset. So see here I applied input 0. Okay. Whether I am getting output 0. Yes. That is nothing but D flip flop. Okay. Now consider other possibility. Suppose if I apply 1, if D is 1, then let's see what is going to happen in this circuit. So if D is 1, what is going to happen? J will be 1. So due to this 1, output of this NOT gate will be 0. Okay, so this 0 will come here, K will become 0. So in case of JK flip flop, if J is 1 and K is 0, what should be the next state of JK flip flop? So here J stands for set operation. So as J is 1, what should be the next state of JK flip flop? Yes, it should be 1. So here we have applied input 1 and what output we are getting? Again 1. So whether this is deep flip flop? Yes, this is deep flip flop. So in this way we can implement deep flip flop by using combination of JK flip flop and inverter.